Give me liberty or give me death. For today's lesson, we have three guiding questions. How did the colonists respond to the continued taxes and acts that were imposed on them from the British Parliament? Two, what did Patrick Henry do that got more people talking about no taxation without representation in Virginia? And three, what did Thomas Paine do that got more people talking about no taxation without representation in the colonies? Go ahead and open your history notebooks to the next blank page and begin your notes here. The colonists were clearly not happy about the unfair taxes that Parliament kept putting on them year after year. They were sick and tired of British soldiers living in their homes, in their towns, enforcing the laws, threatening their peaceful way of life. They were angry that they were not seen as regular British citizens, since they had no representation in Parliament to advocate for themselves. They did not get to vote for who was making their laws over in England. By 1774, something needed to change. But war was not something the colonists had in mind. In the fall of 1774, the colonies sent delegates to meet together in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania to discuss what needed to be done about taxation without representation and the intolerable acts that Boston was now facing as a result of the Boston Tea Party. This meeting was called the First Continental Congress, and 12 of the 13 colonies sent delegates to discuss how Parliament was purposefully punishing colonists for questioning and protesting against the taxes. You can see from the map how many delegates came to the meeting from each colony. You may want to note that New York sent the most, and Pennsylvania and Virginia were not far behind. Many people in the colonies were worried that Parliament would start punishing other colonies like Boston, too. These, met, these men met in a building called Carpenter's Hall in Philadelphia that is still here today. What got accomplished from this meeting? Well, basically these men agreed upon writing a letter to the king telling him that the colonies were still loyal to him, but argued that Parliament had no right to tax them without their say. This letter was called the Olive Branch Petition in the hopes that they could help him see things from their perspective and give the colonies delegates in Parliament who could represent them and give input on what laws were being made. The First Continental Congress also made a law together saying that all the colonies would stop importing British goods since these were mostly things that were being taxed anyway. So what happened? Well, the king ignored the Olive Branch petition. Parliament ignored the request for colonial representation. Draw a picture of the king ignoring the letter in your notes to remember his response. Things stayed the same for the colonies. The colonies in England were not getting along. Things were even more frustrating. British soldiers kept enforcing the tax laws and nothing changed. Colonists were starting to become more and more angry about the situation with no end in sight. It is now 1775, March in fact. Remember, things have been bad since 1763 and that's 12 years ago. Longer than many of you have even been alive. One Virginian had had enough. His name was Patrick Henry. He was a landowner and a member of the House of Burgesses. Remember that? Virginia's colonial government? Well, this group of men was still meeting, and they were not happy about how England was treating them. Patrick Henry got up in front of many other Virginians at St. John's Church in Richmond, which was the largest building around, to ask his fellow men to rise up against the British government. Not just by speaking out, but by fighting for independence. His famous speech quotes the line, give me liberty or give me death, meaning that Britain had taken away the freedom for men in the colonies to vote for representatives who made tax laws for them. And because Britain was taking these essential rights away as Englishmen, they would rather die than continue to live under the authority of the king who no longer listened or cared about what the colonists themselves wanted. 
draw Patrick Henry with a speech bubble that says, give me liberty or give me death to remember his famous words. Patrick Henry was convinced that war was just around the corner and he arrived at the Virginia Convention determined to persuade his fellow Burgesses and those listening to his speech that they should get ready to actually go to war with Great Britain. St. John's Church in Richmond, Virginia is a museum today, and a few years ago I went there with my brother. Visitors can go and watch a reenactment of Patrick Henry's famous speech and how the Virginians listening to it responded. Some of those Virginians include people you've heard of, like Thomas Jefferson and George Washington. Another man who was also tired of sitting around waiting for things to change in the colonies in regards to England was Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine wrote an instant best-selling brochure that convinced many to join the Patriots, those who wanted to go to war with England and create their own country, the United States of America, free from the tyranny of the mother country. This brochure was titled Common Sense and was published in January 1776 in Philadelphia. The crazy thing is that 120,000 copies were in circulation in just four months. People who had never considered going to war started to think it may be a good idea after all. Common sense quickly made its way to all areas of colonial society, including the secret meetings of the Sons of Liberty in taverns throughout Boston. Draw a picture of people reading this pamphlet and talking about it together. Thomas Paine's arguments were straightforward. One of them was, should an island rule a continent? See the map? England is a little island off the coast of Europe. Look at how small it is in comparison with the colonies the continent of North America. Does that even make sense? Draw a picture of this argument next to your notes on this. Paine argued for two main points throughout the brochure. The first was the colonies should band together and break away from England to gain independence. The second argument was that the colonies should make their own government called a democratic republic, which basically means that a country's government is made up of elected people called representatives that the citizens living in that country vote for to make laws and decisions for their country.